Greetings friends, Jawless Paul here. In this video, I'm gonna be talking a little bit about the legendary keepsakes, what I think of them, and maybe just generally how powerful I think that they each are. I'll explain to you just a little bit about what they do, and hopefully give you a sense of why I feel the way I do about them. And if you have comments, obviously leave them below. I'm interested to hear what you have to say about these as well. Also, if you have any interest in supporting the channel, but you don't want to spend real money, first of all, thank you for watching these videos. That helps a ton. But also, if you're ever in the market to buy something on Amazon, there are Amazon links down below for the headphones that I use and a few other items. And if you would like to buy those or really anything else, if you click the link, it helps out the channel a ton. Let's get into it. First, we've got Meg. Meg's keepsake is companion baddie you summon uh, your summon deals 2500 damage in an area near your closest foe then continues down the line this is the go-to keepsake for speedrunners they put this on because it can clear out the final phases of many bosses it's also very good at clearing out the entire health pool or armor pool of a lot of champ enemies. It has a very short delay before the explosion goes off. Uh, it can be a little bit difficult to hit multiple enemies because the explosion starts near you and, and goes in a line and then it's a little bit hard to just, you know, the game doesn't exactly know where to put that line. So it can be a little bit tough. That being said, I love it. I think it's a great keepsake uh even though it is a little bit challenging to line up it just does the perfect amount of damage 2500 is just perfect for uh, most bosses and champs it does a lot of damage and it can basically get through uh phases of different enemies for instance the final phase of the hydra fight you can just push the button and delete the hydra uh, which is pretty great i should mention though that companion batty cannot be used in the fury fight because well you can't use Megara's companion against her. Just the way it works. And for a long time, you will not be able to use this against Hades, but there is an event that changes that uh, later on in the game. Most of these are able to be used against Hades eventually. Next, we have Companion Mort. Your summon deals 3,500 damage in an area in front of you after a brief delay. This keepsake is not as good as Meg. You would think that it would be comparable or better because it's more damage. However, the area is large. I'll give it that. But the, the delay, it says after a brief delay, that delay is really, it really feels long. And that's the primary reason why we don't I don't use this keepsake. Most people that I've watched or seen don't use this keepsake because it, the delay is just a little bit too long to be particularly useful. I'll have a clip of what it actually looks like. Um, but for that reason, I'd say it's it's a C tier keepsake. Meg is uh, an A tier keepsake and S tier for speed running. Companion Mort is C tier, mostly just because of that delay. It, it can, you know, clear a room out, but 3,500 is more than enough to clear out a room. It's a little bit hard to hit the bosses with, and it's a little bit too much damage for the bosses, honestly, because most bosses have different phases, and at the end of those phases, they become immune to damage. And so if you over damage the enemies, uh, it does nothing. It does no good. So that's why I don't particularly love Companion Mort. Next, Companion Shady, your summon deals a thousand damage in an area and drops a smattering of health, darkness, and coins. This is a fantastic legendary keepsake. Sisyphus gives this to you after a long, long quest line. Um, this is maybe one of the hardest keepsakes to get, um, but it's worth it. It's so good. So you do a thousand damage in a small area. It is fairly small, but it drops health and darkness and money. The darkness, if you have dark regeneration on, also counts as health. So that actually is double healing. It's, it's just amazing. If, if you're feeling like you're about to die in a boss fight, just summon Shady and basically you refill a portion of your health pool. Very, very nice. And then the money is great as well. Money is super, super useful in this game for healing yourself and buffing different things and buying death defiances if you lose those. So I think Companion Shady is the best keepsake in the game. For just general runs if you once you get this I don't see a huge reason to take any of the other ones if if you're just struggling to get through and you like the healing like I just I use this most of the time this is my 
companion of choice most of the time. S tier for sure. Next, we have Skelly. Companion Rib, your summon creates a distraction with 250 health, provoking your foes to attack it until it dies. So this is the only keepsake that does no damage. Now, this is okay, but it doesn't really do as much as maybe you want it to. So this can also, I should notice, can also be damaged by you. If you're attacking and you hit Skelly, it will take damage from you as well. This just doesn't see a huge, uh, I don't see a huge use for it. it it's not, it, it might be useful in some champ rooms. I could see that being, you know, ones, if you're struggling with some of the different champ rooms, it might help with that. It might help against some bosses, but honestly, everything else just does so much more. So you're missing out on, on the damage of the other keepsakes by taking this one. And what do you really gain? You gain a few seconds where the boss isn't wailing on you. Hades is going to kill this guy so fast, <laughs> right? Like he can, the, the damage is, is intense uh, in that fight. I don't think that it's it's really all that useful. I put it down in, in C tier at least, if not lower. I don't know of anyone who uses it. There might be some combinations that I'm not thinking of. And if you can think of those, please list them below. I'm really interested to see what some of you creative types have done with, with the Skelly Keepsake. But I just think yeah, in terms of comparison, it just can't compare to the others very, very well. Companion Feedy. Uh, your summon joins you for 30 seconds, repeatedly firing shots that petrify foes and deal 70 damage. Uh, Companion Feedy comes from Dusa. A very nice keepsake. It's the best sustaining keepsake, so sustained damage and crowd control, providing the petrify effect. The petrify doesn't work against champions and it doesn't work against bosses so keep that in mind that doesn't it's not really useful for that i can see this being useful for some situations where you have a lot of enemies like if you're you if you're um, opening up if you're opening up a trove and a bunch of enemies spawn in and you want to kill them as quickly as possible bd might be a good choice or if you're doing a trial of the gods bd could be a good choice for that too bosses as well but you just don't have the the petrify effect I give I give Feedy an A. It's generally good, but it doesn't it doesn't have burst, so it's a little bit slower. Not good for speed running. Might be good for higher heat runs. It's hard to it's hard to exactly quantify how beneficial this is against bosses, but it's it's generally okay. It's pretty good. All right, companion Antos. Your summon deals 1,500 damage to two foes, one after another. This one also comes after a very long quest line. This is given by Achilles slash Patroclus. And this is okay. The only problem that I see with this one generally is that it's hard to control who gets hit by the summon, right? So one one deals 1,500 in a tiny, so it is actually area damage. The, you know, Achilles drops down and then Patroclus drops down and they it's like a an area burst where they land. And, um, but you don't know where they're gonna land, right? They're, they're going to land on an enemy, but you don't get to decide which enemy. If you're fighting the Minotaur and Theseus, obviously it's gonna land on those two. It's great for that fight, it's perfect for that fight. If you're fighting Hades, it'll land on Hades one time, and it'll land on probably one of his skulls or one of his, you know, one of the enemies that he summoned. So that's not super great. You don't get that full damage on, on the enemy that you want. Uh, if if there's only one enemy on the screen, I think the second one will land on the on the same person, but it's a little bit unreliable, I guess, in that way. Antos, I, I give it a B. It's not, I don't think it has uh, the potential that some of these other ones do, but it's still very, very solid and, and certainly not worthless. And it's pretty cool, actually. I think it's the coolest looking one of all of them. It's it's pretty neat. But uh, that does it for all of the all of the legendary keepsakes. I think that they're a lot of fun. I, I, you know, they take a long time to unlock. They're maybe the last thing that you unlock in this game, at least from my experience, they're the last thing that I, that I unlock just because the quest lines are very, very long. You have to play many, many runs and many, many lines of dialogue before you find them all. And I do have a video explaining how those get unlocked. You can check those out. If you enjoy this video, please hit the like button. It helps out a ton. And if you want to see more guide videos, I make a ton of those and just gameplay videos, highlight runs, that kind of thing. Uh, recently, I did a collaboration with Halion where we did uh, we did a 40 heat attempt and we had some nice discussion about uh, heat settings and how to, you know, min max that a little bit, just our thoughts on that. So check those videos out. I think uh, you'll enjoy them, but let's call it there, you guys. Take it easy and we'll see you in the next one.